Tonight, every 99 cent store is preparing to close their doors for good. It's impacting families who depend on those low prices, as well as, of course, the employees working there. CBS 13's Esteban Reynoso is live for us in South Sacramento with the impact really already being felt there, Esteban. Sad. I can't get my apples and bananas now. I think people are going to miss it. Whether it was walking in with their own carts or leaving with their hands full. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. Shoppers here in South Sacramento are bummed about losing this 99 cent only store. It's usually busy, but not like this. This is over busy. Brian Croft remembers when this store first opened its doors and how vital it was to the community here. It's probably in this neighborhood, this was a good store for this. This, this needed to stay here, and, and now it's going to be gone. So. The company announced Thursday all of its stores, nearly 400 across four states, would start liquidation before eventually closing for good, leaving many here with fewer options for shopping. Now I just have to shop at the stores, <laughs> at the grocery store and pay higher price, a lot higher price now. And it's leaving all of their employees without a job. Uh, this is pretty scary. Sanjay Varshney is a professor of finance with Sacramento State. He says this growing trend of dollar stores closing is troubling. Given that the cost of living in California already is very high, if these stores shut down in the very neighborhoods where they used to be popular at one time, uh, it is going to have a major impact on those populations. So why are they shutting down? Dr. Varshney says raising wages is having a big effect on companies. Try and raise the prices. Uh, you know, um, uh, on goods and services because you're raising the, the salaries uh, and raising the, the cost of production, uh, they're simply going to pass it on to the consumer. Clearly, 99 cent stores uh, clearly is not able to afford the low margins. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. We got to talk about another story uh, that I think is a good example of the Democrats denying reality, where they piss on your leg and tell you that it is raining. Okay, they do that. Quite a bit. It doesn't matter what subject it is. Like, for example, the border. They say that, well, the border is not open, right? Even though the border is open. Okay, it's wide open. Uh, they do that when it comes to crime. They say, well, crime is down, right? Crime is down even though in these liberal cities, uh, the people there feel as unsafe as they've ever felt, right? Uh, you have people in New York City, women, uh, getting randomly punched, okay? You have all types of chaos and destruction going on in the subways. But hey, if you listen to the woke activists, no, 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 crime is down, right? Listen to Democrats, crime is down. It's a Republican conspiracy theory, right? And now we got to talk about the economy where Democrats and the mainstream liberal media are telling us, no, 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 the economy is great, okay? The idea that the economy is not great, that the American people aren't doing great right now is simply a um, conspiracy theory from the right. The economy is Great. Just trust us. Trust the government numbers. Breaking news coming in hot, red hot. The economy added 303,000 jobs in March, way, way higher than expectations. Seeing as Matt Egan is with us now, Matt, give us a sense of these numbers and what it means. John, this is another blockbuster jobs report. And I got to give you credit because about an hour ago af off camera, you half jokingly said, well, what if it comes in at 300,000? You almost nailed it. 303,000 jobs added last month. This is 50% more than expected. Uh, it is an acceleration from what we saw in February. The unemployment rate taking down to 3.8%. You know, these really are very impressive numbers. And this jobs market it just continues to defy expectations, both in a short-term basis, coming in hotter and hotter than expected, but also when you zoom out, this jobs market is so much better than people thought. A lot of economists reasonably expected that the Fed's war on inflation, spiking interest rates, was going to cause the unemployment rate to go up, was going to cause job loss, and that just has not happened. If anything, this jobs market is heating up. And some economists are already, they're baffled by these numbers, right? One economist just put out a report with the subject line, wow, and writing, quote, the data leave us borderline speechless. Some context around these numbers, we're now looking at more than three straight years of monthly job gains. That is the fifth longest streak on record. And the unemployment rate is now below 4% for 26 months in a row. That is the longest streak since the late 60s and early 1970s under LBJ and Richard Nixon. So, John, listen, you can't bet, a bet, get bet against this jobs market because it just continues to defy expectations. Yeah, so you see, now you hear that. According to CNN, amazing numbers across the board. We haven't seen this in forever, okay? According to the mainstream level media, right? It's just kind of funny how 
this works because again when it comes to other issues like immigration and, and crime uh the numbers of the word of the government does not seem to match the reality that people are experiencing right and the same thing goes with the economy okay i mean they come out every single month with these amazing numbers, but that's just not how the people are feeling, right? The people are not feeling like the economy is doing amazing. Also, you are getting these stories very frequently about massive layoffs and shutdowns of businesses, okay? For a booming economy, I've never seen so many layoffs uh, and shutdowns of businesses. I mean, I just did a story a couple weeks ago about the Dollar Tree closing a lot of their stores across the country, okay? And you would think that in a booming economy that the poor or those on the lower end of the socioeconomic ladder would be doing well, okay? I mean, that's generally the sign of a, a good economy is when, you know, the people at the bottom are doing well, okay? Then everybody else generally is going to do well too, which is exactly what happened during the Trump economy, right? During the Trump economy, okay, everybody was doing well. The rich were doing well, the poor were doing well, everybody was doing well, right? Everybody was on the up and up, okay, until Bidenomics. <laughs> now with Bidenomics, uh, it's kind of flipped things on his head, particularly when it comes to these dollar stores that historically do well, uh, regardless of whether or not the economy is good or bad. Like, for example, during the Great Recession, dollar stores did well, okay, uh, because that's where people went to shop uh, because they had less money, right? If they had less money, you're going to go to a place like a dollar store and you're going to buy more goods, okay? And during the Great Recession, people were mainly losing their jobs, right? Unemployment was the big issue. However, uh, in Biden's booming economy, right, it's not unemployment that's the issue. The issue is inflation, and inflation has destroyed consumer confidence, okay? Not only has it destroyed consumer confidence, it has also made it extremely difficult for these dollar retail chains to operate because of the increase in the cost of goods, in the cost of labor, which is contributing to the mass shutdowns and the layoffs that we are seeing in Biden's supposedly good economy, right? His, his economy is supposedly so great, but people are not feeling that. And you're seeing companies, again, issue these mass layoffs due to increases in cost, okay? And the fact that it is much more difficult to get by in this economy, despite the great jobs numbers uh, for the Biden administration, okay? And we got to talk about the end of the 99 cents store, which is the latest kind of dollar store chain to close all of their stores because they can't even survive in the Biden economy. So without further ado, let's watch this. More than 40 years, the 99 cent only stores are closing their doors. The operators of the popular discount chain where you could buy anything from cleaning supplies to food and even clothing say they aren't making enough money to survive. The closure will leave nearly 14,000 employees without a job and millions of bargain hunters devastated. KTLA 5, Samantha Cortese joins us live from East Hollywood with more on why the chain is going out of business. Sam. Sharon, Micah, the Gold family started the 99 cent only stores in 1982 and they quickly expanded now in states Texas, Nevada, Arizona and here in California. And tonight shoppers are devastated to learn all these stores are closing. So many people on social media saying this got them through unemployment, hard times with their family, working on a low income and especially we're hearing from people who just love to bargain. Is it true they're closing all the 99s? Yes. That's, what do you think about that? That's crazy because, I mean, when times are tough, man, you don't have a lot of money. 99 was always the store to go to. Shocking news for shoppers. The 99 store, formerly the 99 cents only store, is closing all 371 locations for good. If you're low on cash or <laughs> yeah. you just want to be more frugal because, you know, now everything's so expensive. So. The company officially announced plans to close down, citing financial difficulties stemming from the pandemic, changing consumer demand and rising inflation. And also what they forgot is retail theft, right? That's also a reason that is commonly cited uh, for a lot of these retail chains closing, okay? Like a CVS, a Walgreens, again, Dollar Generals, uh, Dollar Stores, Family Dollar. 
again, retail theft is a part of it, right? That's a part of the Biden economy as well, too, because Biden and Democrats have become so soft on crime that they essentially have legalized shoplifting in some parts of the country. And in parts of the country where they have essentially legalized it, uh, you're seeing a lot of these businesses close up because they can't operate due to inflation, rising costs, and then people basically coming in and stealing stuff, right? That is a double whammy for these businesses. And as a result, you're seeing these chains that, for example, again, thrive during um, you know, economic downturns like what they were talking about in this video, uh, even they can't survive Biden's economy, right? If dollar stores can't survive Biden's economy, I'm not sure how you can say that the economy is great, right? I'm just saying, like, it, it's not adding up, right? Something ain't adding up, right? It's not like people are saying, you know what, I'm going to skip the dollar store because I'm making too much money, right? And I'm just not going to shop at a dollar store anymore. I'm too uppity for that. Nah, that's not what people are saying. What people are saying is that, well, mm, you know, the dollar store is even getting expensive, right? <laughs> even the dollar store is expensive. And the dollar store knows that they can't survive with such low margins uh, and still call themselves the dollar store, right? They're not the dollar store anymore. Has anybody tried to buy a $5 foot long lately? Right? That doesn't even exist anymore. I mean, Subway is advertising the uh, $6, uh, six inch, right? <laughs> six inch, $6 sub, right? It went from $5 foot long to six dollars six inch but i mean hey it is what it is subway was disgusting anyway so i don't even eat at subway so i i get it but regardless i'm just saying um the price of everything is going up and it is killing the low cost uh providers shoppers were devastated prices are cheap cheaper than the other stores so what are you gonna do yeah what are you going to do i don't know I need to look for another place, but it's difficult in this time. I think that they should keep it open for certain people who can't afford expensive food. They also say crime is rampant. We witness multiple people grabbing items and walking out. Security tells us it can happen up to 20 times a day. I uh, tell the police or some of the guards that is in the store, but sometimes I just pass it because we cannot do nothing. Liquidation sales begin Friday. I guess I shot one last time, man, and man, I don't know. It's like everything's closing. I don't, and it's sad that everything's closing like that. Again, 99 cent only stores employs between 14 and 17,000 people who are out of a job. Some people we spoke with had a meeting with their manager that they said was very emotional. Others said they found out via email. And Sharon Micah on our social media tonight were asking how people are reacting to this news. So many people saying it got them through hard times, but also, they used to go there for everyday items that cost more in a grocery store. A few things on the list, batteries, Hot Wheels, gift bags and cards, eyelashes, and a lot of people saying they're going to miss a cheap spot to buy some holiday decor. Here in East Hollywood, Samantha Cortese, back to you. Yeah, it's a yeah so you've seen that you heard that, <clears throat> okay? Biden's economy. Now, again, if you say that that's the reality of the economy, they'll say you're a conspiracy theorist. And everything is great, right? This stuff is not happening, okay? Which, I mean, again, shows you the disconnect between the government numbers and reality, okay? And this is why in an election year, people have to be careful about the propaganda coming from the Biden administration and pay attention to what's happening on the ground, right? Believe your eyes, okay? They don't lie to you. <laughs> what you see happening is, in fact, reality, okay? Because Democrats, they deny reality. But, again, most people on the ground can see what's going on and uh, I don't think that uh, the propaganda for the mainstream liberal media claiming that the border is secure and that crime is down and that the economy is great uh, is going to change uh, what people are actually experiencing in their daily lives, which is destruction and chaos and uh, just the higher cost of living. And just it's just much more difficult to get by. So let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.